Good day. My name is Deling Kambule and I'll be taking you through the Enforcement and Compliance Division exemptions under the Property Practitioners Act. Um, the exemptions um, have been introduced into the Property Practitioners Act. Previously, we had the Section 27 Act under the Estate Agency Affairs Act. It provided for the disqualification of estate agents on various grounds. And also, it also provided um, that where the board was satisfied with due regard to all relevant considerations, that any person who had been disqualified could then be issued with a Fidelity Fund certificate in the interest of justice, the board would issue the person with a, an FFC. The board then made use of this provision to allow ag agents who were disqualified to use this provision to come back into the industry and be issued with an FFC. However, under the Property Practitioners Act, Section 27 has been completely repealed and it has been replaced with Section 50, which provides for disqualifications. The situation, however, is then remedied by Section 40 because we no longer have Section 27. And in terms of Section um, 4 of that Act, it provides that any agent may now apply in terms of Section 4 for an exemption from any of the specific provisions that are included, whether in the Act or also in Section 50. This can be done by submitting an application form for exemption and there is a specific form which is um, required to be submitted and it's found in the regulation. This form must be accompanied by an affidavit. In the affidavit, the exemption must state uh, or explain the reasons for the application it must also include supporting documentation. At any point, the authority may also request for additional documentation. The applicant may be required as well to appear in person for consideration of the application, or the authority may request for verbal responses to questions that they may pose to the applicant. The affidavit as well must also be submitted. Um, it can be submitted via online. It can be submitted on the portal emailed, um, hand-delivered at the uh, Property Practitioners um, Regulatory Authority offices in Sentin. And the legislation, although it empowers someone to apply uh, for an exemption, it also, however, gives a, an opportunity for any person to object to an exemption application. And this person must then submit um, a form that is prescribed in the regulations and the authority will then consider the applications. In considering the exemption application, the authority needs to take into account certain criteria and some of the criteria um, that the authority has to take into account is whether the granting of the exemption is likely to impact negatively on the interests of the general public, whether granting the exemption is going to impact negatively on competition in the property sector or the property practitioners industry. Another consideration that must be taken into account by the authority when granting the exemption is whether in granting the exemption there is a likelihood um, that it will benefit one section of the property practitioners industry to the detriment of an of another um, industry. Also, the um, authority needs to take into account appropriate and sufficient effective regulatory protection of consumer rights, whether these exist um, before it can grant the exemption. And also it must consider whether exemption would not defeat the objects of the Act. The criteria also to be taken into account under the regulations is whether granting such exemption will not have a material adverse effect upon the rights of the consumers. E-exemption uh, may be granted from holding a tax clearance or a BEE certificate. However, the Act is very clear that no exemption application is required for natural persons and both um, provisions and both provisions, which is the section 54 and 6, is that um, the exemption can be granted by default when the person applies for an FFC without um, applying, without submitting an actual application uh, for an exemption. Another criteria that has, been, that has to be taken into account when granting the exemption is whether the the, the, w whether there's an administrative burden on the authority uh, by not granting the exemptions. 
Exemptions may also be granted to non-executive directors. The authority, however, should consult with relevant industry bodies before they grant an exemption to any person who has um, requested for an exemption. An application for an exemption, once it has been submitted to the property um, authority, what it does is that it holds any action that may be instituted against that person and that person and that action can only then be instituted when the exemption application has been granted. A compliant application, once submitted to the authority, must be considered within 60 working days unless the authority uh, within 20 working days requests uh, for an extension to the exemption. The 60 days for considering the exemption starts afresh if the authority asks the applicant for further information or requests for corrective action. If not considered as required by the Act within 60 days, then the exemption is deemed to have been granted. An exemption may be, um, may be applied for by any person or organization, including a representative association, um, on behalf of its members. Applicants, once granted an exemption, it may be granted for a maximum of three years, and an exemption may not be granted retrospectively. Details of the exemption, once it has been granted, must be published on the authority's website with certain declarations. Um, further, any exemption outcome um, that is not favorable to the applicant may be reviewed to the ministers. Exemptions may also be suspended, withdrawn um, by the authority on good grounds. An exemption application may be submitted simultaneously, as I've previously stated, with an application for an FFC. And also, this means that it must be dealt with simultaneously, and there is no need to then apply separately for um, an exemption once you apply for an FFC. The authority may discharge also, um, in terms of an exemption, such fees if a person requests to be exempted from um, fees, provided that the person can uh, prove that um, he is under financial hardship or where it is in the interest of justice to grant the person an exemption. Exemption may also be granted to non-executive directors where those directors are not directly involved in the management and oversight of individual property practitioners. Also, other than a sole proprietor, an application for an FFC by a natural person will be deemed to be an application for exemption and no formal application will be required. All natural property practitioners will, upon applying for an FFC, be deemed to be exempted from qualifying or being requested to submit a BE certificate.